we started with the things that shape our faith. Um, we've been looking at interesting stuff. I think we've looked at the philosophy, how your philosophy shaped your faith. And then we start talking about knowledge as well. I skipped the virtue so that I will treat it later. Um, I mean values, so that I will treat it later. And then we start talking about knowledge. And we said a lot of things about knowledge, actually. Um, we, we mentioned that there's a meat part of the word and there's a milk part of the word. And then we spoke about the matured Christian. And the Bible said those that are matured are skillful in the word of righteousness. And you have to understand that the word of God is it's also a principle that you have to be skillful in the way we apply it to our lives. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like any other principle, any other principle, it's very important that we learn how to apply it. So we looked at that. And one of the significant things about a matured Christian is their ability to be able to implement the word of God. We spoke about all that. And then we came to, I think last week, we started talking about the different kind of knowledge. And I spoke about idol being aware. The Bible said, I write these things to you who believe in the name of our son, that you may know that you have eternal life, and this life is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that word know there means to be aware, to perceive with your eyes, and notice, and to discover. Hallelujah. And then we came to Gnosis. So that's where we ended. Gnosis means a scientific knowledge. Now, the, the word of God has principles in it that is applicable for governing our life. And the Bible describes it as gnosis. You know, the, the, when we say explanation, now, sometimes I heard someone say that, why is that now the pastors, when they are preaching, they will say the Greek word and all that. Look, it's not for fun. Say, well, some people do it for fun. But when you want to understand meanings, words, that are, to explain something, there are two parts. The, Explaining things with a purpose and explaining by meaning. So there will be a reason why the person has said that. So it's very important. You need to know. And also, there is a meaning of the word. So the word knowledge, that is used in the English language, meant different things when they are used on different occasion. So when the Bible said that to our faith, let us add knowledge, he was talking about Gnosis to your to your faith. There are principles that govern us on this earth, and those principles are very important. You understand it. Let's assume you don't understand the law of gravity. You will be killed. Now, let me give you an example. Like this coronavirus we are in. You can say you by faith you wear no mask. I hope you're getting it. That time we had a serious argument with someone. He said, anyone who is wearing those masks doesn't believe God. Yeah, that, that is a, a childish way of doing analysis. Because, you see, the Bible is saying to our faith, let us add knowledge. I think it's, uh, yes, for this reason, make every effort to add your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge. That word knowledge there is science. It's gnosis scientific application and other meaning means the principles and the rules and the laws that governs human life. It governs us. And so you can't say that I'm a Christian so I have faith. I won't know no smart. You will die because you don't understand that that wisdom is also created. That knowledge is also created by God and man has discovered it. You, you, you get what I'm saying? You have, man has also discovered it. So it is very important that your faith, you add what? Knowledge. I skip the goodness is virtue. If you look at the King James Version, the New King James Version said virtues are values. Hallelujah. So that is very important. And another meaning to that means that um, knowledge relating to particular circumstances or issues, you need to understand Different knowledge that apply to different things. You can't be a Christian and be ignorant. It's not good. Yesterday in class, I don't know whether I should do the same test here. 
but I know most of you will pass. So, uh, at lectures, I asked them, how many, last year, 2020, last year, 2020, how many of you read books? Books in 2020. Let me see. Uh, read a book. We are in the house of the Lord. If you lie, we'll gosh, the Holy Spirit to see. How many books? Mm -hmm. Please, it's not your lecture notes. Not lecture. You read books. Yeah. In fact, on, in my lecture room, the whole student, there was one man who said he read one book the whole of 2020, and he is a father. He's a priest. And I said, then what do you go? You see, the one thing about knowledge is that when you get it, it makes so much different difference in your life. So much difference. You are not the same when, like if you receive knowledge today, you are not the same. You are not the same. It's not, it's not true that you'll be the same. You have made an advancement in terms of psychology. Psychologically, you have made an advancement. It is just a matter of time that it will show. So, when Peter was saying that he wasn't mixing words, it's very important that no matter the faith you have, you can't, you can't say you won't know relevant things that are happening. You have to be aware. You, you, you get what I'm saying? You have to understand finance. You have to understand how to, I, I've said, you see, being talented doesn't mean you will succeed. Because your faith is a raw thing. There are so many things that shape it. And one of them it's knowledge. So we, we saw that. So there are other knowledge like worldly knowledge and then there are Christian knowledge. That's what the Bible said that we have to be matured in understanding but infant in uh, infant in malice, evil. There are some knowledge they are not necessary for you. Knowing how to date 20 girls is not a good knowledge for you. The Bible says that be infant in those things and be matured in he said that, but do not be children in understanding. But what, however, in malice, be babes. Malice means bad, you know, evil, all this. He said, be malice, in malice be babes, but in understanding be what? Mature. He, when you go before, he was talking about you have to know all these spiritual things. Be, be, be matured in them. There are things that are relevant to your prosperity. There are things that directly impact your future. Those are the things. Now, the children that have come, they know a lot of things on their phone. They know, but, bon, bon. Like, they don't know so much. But the things they know that has occupied their mind, it's amazing. So, Bible is saying that, be infant. If you don't know how... I don't know what uh, example I should use. What are some of the bad things? No, not only bad things. There's something they are not. They are not relevant. If you don't know the names of football stars, it's not sin. But if you don't know salvation, you don't know the glory of God. You don't understand things in the Word of God. It is problem number one. On the hierarchy, you have to know God first. If you don't understand financial principle, you'll be poor. It is very important you know it. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So it is in your interest as a Christian that everything you find out. So that's what he's saying. To your faith, you add the virtue. And to virtue, he said, you add knowledge. Hallelujah. Please, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. And so we, we, we went on to go at that. And today I'm talking about Ginosko. So we've looked at nurses. Specific knowledge related to specific things. So there's another kind of knowledge. So the word knowledge that was mentioned has different meanings in the Bible. So when you go down, go to the root word, you find that it connotes different things. So we've looked at gnosis, which is specific knowledge to specific issues and knowledge, knowledge and rules that govern our lives. I hope you understand that. But this, we are going to look at ginosko. It's also another type of knowledge. So let's look at Philippians 3 verse 10. He said, Philippians 3 verse 10, he said, and this, so that I may know him. So can you go to the amplifier? He said that I may know him, experientially becoming more thoroughly acquainted with him. 
understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection which overflows and is active in believers and that I may share the fellowship of his suffering by being continuously conformed inwardly into his likeness even to his death dying as he did. So he said, the word that I may know, the word know there, this time is not gnosis. It's called ginosko. And it's a type of knowledge. You see, so let's say we are moving step by step. Above gnosis, above you knowing the rules that govern life. So for instance, you know coronavirus, isn't it also? We know. We know we have to put on nose masks. You have to take vitamin C. When I wake up every morning, I take my vitamin C. I won't say I have faith, so I won't take I take vitamin C. I do social distancing. When I'm going into any crowd, I put on my nose mask. I do all that. I wash my hands. I take hand sanitizer. It is a type of level of knowledge. Now, above that, there is a knowledge called ginosko. It is beyond science. And this is something that you come to the realization of the role God is playing in your life. You see, after I've taken medicine, I must go on to believe that I am a Christian. And for that reason, God has the ability to heal me. You see, it's so you are not staying at one level of knowledge. If you, are, you want to come out of poverty, we will do that. I will do a series called How to Stabilize Your Life. They are all in the Bible. They are principles in the life. So now, if I understand that God can prosper me, it's, it's something you have to come to that awareness and perception. You have to get that perception and that philosophy. It is, that is why we said that the philosophy is, this is an, a knowledge that shapes your thinking. Second Timothy 2, verse 19. The Bible said that for those he foreknew. So, nevertheless, the foundation that God stands sure, having this is that God knoweth them that are his. And let every knoweth, that knoweth there is Ginosko. He said that those before the foundation of this world, God knows his own. He already had perceived you. Or conceived, you it's like conceiving an, an idea in your mind. You are talking to somebody and they're okay, you're holding so I found one again. It's like that. You have already, it's a, like a mindset you have. It's, it is beyond scientific knowledge. And this, this is, uh, these are words that are not like um, only specialized for Christians, it's not customized, it's not a preserve of Christians. Anybody who has broken, those who broke through major things in this world, they moved from the, that basic understanding and they moved to Gnosko. That's why Einstein said that, they said knowledge is power, but imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Because what you can see you see, that's what Paul said. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is of good reports, if there is any praise, he said, think about this. He said, beyond just the, eh, I didn't go to school. Yes, you didn't go to school, but you can prosper even if you didn't go to school. You see, it's another kind of thinking. Please, I hope you are getting it. Uh-huh. So when Paul was saying this, he was saying that the Lord knows them that are his and let everyone that names the name, names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And verse 20 he said, in the large house, there are many vessels. You see? Isn't it also? In the great, there are not only vessels, uh, are not only gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some for what? Common use. And other versions say some are for noble purposes and some are for ignoble purposes. Purposes. So, for instance, if you are in the house, you have some, some of your intensities, you put your soap in it, is it not it? And your sponge, is it not it? You have pails, you have those cups too that you use regularly to drink, and spoons and intensities you use regularly, is it not so? 
And if you have women in your house, they have those ones they have packed there. When they did wedding, they gave it to them. They packed there for special visitors. Is it not true? Uh, is it not true? Uh, the men, they are, they, you don't know. They've done all these things. They plan ahead so that when a visitor comes, that's why I say in the large house, there are what? Articles. Go to King James. You see vessels. Uh-huh. So there are not only vessels. There are not only intenses like cups. Those are all vessels. Other versions say anything way. Okay, so there are, there are so many things that are used in the house. It's not only of gold and silver, but also of wood. There are some vessels that they are made of wood. Some are gold, some are silver. And so some of what? Hana. We give it to people, important persons. So when Anadu is coming to your house, you have a special cup that you want to give. And there are cups that is of no Hana. We, we put it somewhere. It's there. With some people, it, oh, so you know the cups, you know the difference. And he added that, but, you see, go to the 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, you have moved your mind. He said, I was not born in a rich family. I was not born in America. I was not born in Britain. But you see, he's saying that if you purge yourselves from these, you have to be able, they said that every breakthrough was a breakthrough out of a, a thinking. The person broke out of a thinking. A regular thinking. The way normal things are. The way science said. You know, the principle they have discovered said this. Nobody can fly. But people managed to see beyond that. And they started working on it. And they flew. The one who brought telephone said, ah, can't we speak beyond the sea? You see? So they started thinking like that. And that same principle now is Peter, uh, Paul is talking about it in the spiritual perspective. He said, those who purge themselves from this, he said that what will will happen to them? He said, if a man therefore purge, he shall be a vessel unto Hannah. So let me give you another, a better, a good explanation. So let's say you have a cup in your house, you put utensil in it. It, uh, What, sorry? You put sponge in it. Then somebody, a visitor came to your house and he saw that I said that, ah, do you know this is, this is gold? You didn't know. He said, do you know this is gold? Or he says that, this is, do you know this is a special mineral that has been discovered recently? And that this, the size of what you have, can give you $30 billion. What would you do? What would, you, what would be your instinct? Instinctively, what would you do? Yeah. And then clean it. Uh-huh. You're under your bed. You go and take security men. You, you see, immediately, the purpose of the thing, because of the value, has changed your mind. And now you value it. And so the Bible is saying that if you purge yourself from that thinking, if you purge yourself and thinking that, oh, me, me, fra, me, I, I'm just part of the people. Okay, I'm from here. I won't succeed. You know, people think like that. Hey, me, I don't have this, so I can't do it. Hey, I don't have that, I can't do it. He like said, if you purge yourself, he said that you will be set aside. You, uh, didn't, uh, didn't you, uh, are you not all going to set you as, the thing aside? If you discover it has a value, won't you set it aside? And so he's saying that he shall be a vessel unto and a sanctified, meet for the masters, and prepared unto what? Good works. That is why you need to have that kind of knowledge that everywhere you are, you can prosper. You know, you you have to come to that. That despite my limitations, I can break through. No, I I looked at a a program at TED.com. The lady, she's a stammerer. She starts, when she's speaking, that she's stammering. But she's one of the top speakers. She says that she realized that that shouldn't be her problem. So when she, she's speaking and there's a word that will make her stammer, then she will swerve the word and pick an alternative one. Your people have done things. Too. Because in the large earth, there are many vessels. So you say, oh, me, I don't, I'm not a professor. I mean, that's why I'm not there. People have given themselves reasons why 
they will fail. But God is not like that. But he said he will purge you. If you purge yourself, he will sanctify you. Put you aside. Prepare you unto good works. Not only that, for the master's use. Now people who, you the vessel, you the vessel that you have been purged and sanctified, you will be used for special purposes. I hope you are getting it. So there's that kind of knowledge that goes beyond just scientific knowledge. Hallelujah. So that is a second kind of knowledge. So the gnosko means to learn to know. To learn to know. Come to know. You come to a point. You, you get what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You know, people, there are people, let me give you a story I read. There was this beggar who was sitting at a train station and begging for money. Then whilst he was begging, a man, a very rich man was passing. So if you give him money, then he'll give you what? The toffee. But this rich man came, and the rich man put the toffee in his head. So he came back, and he demanded the toffee. And then the, the, the rich man asked them, are you not doing a business? You are transacting. So I put the money, give me the toffee. So the, the beggar looked at the man. So the man took his toffee <laughs> and left. Some few years after, the rich man went to a dinner party where big people had been invited. And the house was there, and then a man came to him and said, oh, do you remember me? And he said, no. And he said, I was the beggar who was sitting at the rain station that you gave the money and you came back for the toffee. And you said to me, am I not in business that? And he said, that word you said to me brought me to a realization that I'm transacting. And he said, that changed his mind. And that is how he was moved from poverty to wealth. You see, you are not looking hard. That is why when you come to places like here where we are teaching you to transform your mind so you can test and prove. When you see opportunities, you can see it. You see, the program that we are going to do on 27th, please all of you come, eh? go and borrow money and come. Try. Uh, because there are things that will open your mind I've told my students that for them it's composite. They have to come. Go and look at my, and come. And we'll give them marks for it. They should, oh, no, but they need it. Unfortunately for us, when I was going to school, I was fortunate. It's not everybody who had what I had. I was fortunate. I went to one of the top universities in London, and we were going for conferences. They would say, oh, we are going to Paris uh, Stock Exchange. You pay money, and then we'll go and watch the stock uh, they will say, we are going here. Then you go. Then they say, go to Ferrari, we go. They are doing seminars which are blanks and you go. And you go and listen. And all those kind of things. So we saw so many things. Here, you go to university first year to fourth year. Rat race, you go, baba, baba, baba. You come out, you don't know anything. So it's the seminars that closes the gaps. These are the craftsmanship of leadership. And so when it brings you to a realization, ah, ah, is that so... So that, the gnosko, that is how it, it changes your perception. And you see, it is beyond just doing one plus one, it got to two. Two plus two is four. Uh-huh. This is gnosko. It is another kind of knowledge. That if we explain, explaining, you won't understand. You go to school, ah, you won't get it. It is some, it's a perception that is changed. Sometimes it takes you by working with people who will let you look at things from another perspective. It is also means to become known. Something to become known. Number two, it also means to know, understand, perceive. So when Jesus said that they have eyes but they can't see, they have ears but they can't hear. You, you get what I'm saying? They have eyes but they can't see. They have ears but they can't hear. We have a lot of Christians like that. The opportunity is there, but he can still see that there is a deliverance that has come. And it is not just a mere knowledge. It comes from your ability to do that. So, to understand, to know. And, and the Jewish idiom, 
It also meant sexual intercourse because it's an intimate knowing. It's something that, you see, you come to that understand, to, be, to become acquainted with something. Like we, like a pastor, every day I'm, I'm looking at it. Like I gave you an example when we were at the watch and then Pastor Hansford came and he was sitting there. He said that when he came, he said, uh, Abu Ajay, do this, do that, do that. And immediately it dawned on me. I was asking myself, why am I going to get the money to do that? And it dawned on me that, no, the man has become success. I'm having one of the great men in Ghana standing by me. And I can't tell, I go and say, the pastor mentor me. How is he going to mentor me? But I looked, he's standing by me. And then I realized that. The Holy Spirit said, look, this man invested into his ministry. He invested. So immediately that fell into my spirit. I said, no, I will invest into the church. You see, I said to myself, I will invest into the church. And then so that the church will succeed. But if it succeed, eh, are you getting what I'm saying? Eh. So I started putting resources into it because I came to the realization. And it's not everybody who will see it. It changed. But I can show you stories upon stories, people who have become billionaires just by having a different perception about the issue. Let me give you another example. When I was going in SS, okay, from JSS, we, we've been selling parazo, we've been selling ice water, we've been selling everything. And uh, we've done everything. We, we sold my mother, everything he, she gets, we will sell. Uh-huh. We did not survive of the fittest part. So today we are selling bread. I can remember the other time I went to pass through Coco Mlemle, you know, top radio, Joy FM. There's a, I remember, ah, this place, we were selling bread here. We come and sit there, and then the coat, the were there. And then we were selling, so GSS. So when I went to SS, I was feeling very shy. Now, you, you know, teenagers, adolescents, at certain stage, they feel shy about this thing. So I started feeling shy about it. But whether you feel shy or not, you have no choice. Yeah, you will eat. So what will I do? I will go anyway. Uh-huh. So, I, But when I got to the university, then I was going for champions conference and all that. Ah, Then it came to me. It, like, it came to like a vision, a realization to me that ah, what you are doing is an entrepreneurship. That was all. That time, level 200, I bought a car from Cape Coast, UCC, to Tema, Nestle. I went there myself and Unilever. I went there myself and turned into their office. I said, I want to be a distributor for you. And they told me the steps where you should start from. But come from Cape Coast to Tema. Finished, went back to school. Because just a realization made me realize that my state was a blessing, not what? A curse. It's a type of knowledge. Say, Ginosko. Uh-huh. So that is very important. That is a type of knowledge. It, it unravels so many things to you. It allows you to be aware, perceive, be resolved, can speak, be sure, understand. So let's look at John 21, 15 to 17. John 21, 15 to 17. It said, when they had finished eating, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt. The Bible said, I said, I feel See, why are you asking me those too much questions? And he said that Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. The Bible said because he, he was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Peter felt like, you, are, you don't trust me. And Peter said, Jesus said, do you love me? Because he got hurt because he asked Jesus, why do you love me? And Jesus said, he said to him, Lord, you know, Peter is what he is saying to Jesus. He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. The word no, there is also ginosko. So you see the way it has been used. But, I mean, you have seen in my actions, you have seen 
in everything I do and all that. It's like when you are married and then your spouse comes and always asks you, do you love me? So I love you. And so do you love me? So, ah, all the job money I'm giving you to this. <laughs> all the money. All you all doesn't convince you that you love me. That's what Peter was saying. I have been moving with you. So are you saying you don't know that I love you? You know. And so Peter is expecting Jesus to know at least from our experience. But he didn't know Jesus was trying to put something across. I'm leaving an important tax to you. So look at my relationship with you. And let that be... Let it, your, your work predicate on that relationship I have with so you. That, that's what Jesus was trying to push out. But Peter said, ah, so all these things, haven't you still come to the realization? You know, you can even walk with somebody and you will never know his grace. Look, I have seen people who have worked with great people and they never realize they are great people. You know, have you read Acres of Diamond? He had diamond in his house. He never knew it was diamond. And he left... The place. Oh, you, you, you've not read that story. It's a book. You go and buy it. It's a small book. You can read it within two hours. It's a small book. It's a very profound story. Well, how many of you have read Acres of Diamond? Hey, you've all not read it. Then it's a mass read book. No, you go and read Acres of Diamond. It will change your... It's a small book. It's a small, you can read it within one hour, two hours. Very, very small book. If the guy was suffering. Very suffering, you know. And then he had somebody came to tell him that, look, if you get a diamond like this, hey, you will be the richest man in your community. If you get a diamond like this, the whole city. If you get a diamond like this, hey, that one there, the whole the whole. If you get this, the whole world. Then the man said, hey, so if I get a diamond like that, and he said, where will I get? I said, oh, you have to travel far, travel, go. Like somebody tell you, go to America, go to Britain, get money. So he, he sold his land. That is the land. He sold the land, and he left. And the one who bought the land was one day working on the land, and he saw something shiny, shiny, and he took it, and also didn't know what it was, so he placed it on his table. So a monk came there to visit him. I said, ah, he was coming. The one who came to tell the man that go to, uh, if you get that money, he came and he was coming to ask of the man. And he said, oh, the man has so I bought the land, he has left. And he said, where did he go? So oh, he slept. And then he said, ah, what is on your table? And then the man said, ah, me, I saw it in the land. And I said, it's diamond. No? Hey, is that is diamond. And the man said, what is diamond? And he said the same thing. Hey, this one, you will be rich. And he said, ah, but where is the man? He's gone. And he said, oh. That is diamond. Then the man said, Oh, I'm going there. Let me check. And he started digging the land. I said that the acres of land that he sold was all diamond. He never came to the realization. And so that's how the book is Acres of Diamond. Sometimes you have to look hard. Bible says, if you are a Christian, come to that realization that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. That will work. Not, you see, it is because of the purpose of God in your life. You have to watch your life well. And because you are not seeing it, you are suffering. Because you are not seeing it. Is how many of you understand? See? Because you are not seeing it. So it is very important that you come to the realization. Pray that God will give you that kind of Knowledge. So at one seven said, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know. The word know there is Gnosko, the times and dates the Father has set by his own authority. That has been hidden from us. God doesn't want us to be aware of it. He doesn't want us to uh, know that when it's coming so that you, you will be bad uh, when it gets to the last minute. And so he's coming and preparing for him. Uh-huh. That's not how he said. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Jude- or Judea and Samaria. Act 2.38. He said, therefore, Act 2.36. 
Therefore, let all Israel be assured. So that word to Eskinosko. Assured of this. God has made this, this Jesus whom you crucify, both Lord and Messiah. Both Lord and Messiah. Be assured of this. Come to the full assurance. That, that, so it's like salvation. That is why we do assurance of salvation. You are sure of your salvation. So you are not like ignorant. People are, you are debating. People are debating with you. Uh, is Christ, are you saying if God is there? He's, he has not come to the realization that God, Jesus Christ, has saved him. So that is why it is important as the foundation of everybody, a Christian life, that you know that you are truly what? Saved. So right now, if we say that this whole building breaks down, how many of you are going to heaven? What would you say? How many of you are sure you go to heaven? Uh, how many of you have 50 50? Oh, maybe I'm a cover. It, it, it's, a, it's a, an understanding you have to come. It's a knowledge that you have to acquire. And be sure. He said, I will never leave you nor what? Forsake you. At 8, 30, 30 to 31, he said, Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. So the man was reading the book. He's, he's intellectual. He's knowledgeable. He's reading the book. And then do, and Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? So that word understand means also ginosko. He said, do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. And the man said, how can I? He said, unless someone explain it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. So you see, he was reading something. But still, that is why you see, the Bible said, I've given you a shepherd after your own heart. That will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So when you come, we break. You see, people think that when I take a book, either that we would have say, said to you in the university that I will take these books and go and sit down and read. But the reason you come is that we break the codes. Because in every communication, it's encoded. You, you, you know what I'm saying? It is encoded. So the flow of communication is that when something is said, it has to be decoded at a point so that you understand. That's why we all do understand things equally. Like what I'm saying, some understand it better than others because of our background, our education, level of experience, and all that. So when you come to church, we break certain things that are in the scriptures that perhaps you have not realized it. This, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. So that is what the, 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 the man, he was reading the thing. But when Philip came on board, then he explained that the, thing, the person you are talking about is Jesus Christ. You, you know what I'm saying? He explained to him that it's Jesus Christ. That's why we all need mentorship and all that. At 19, 15 to 60, he said, one day the evil spirit answered them. Jesus, I know. You see, those children of Sceva, they were casting out demons in the name of Jesus. But in actual fact, they were not, I don't know whether they were not born again or whatever. And then the demons started beating them. You know, they did the thing uh, and the demon one day got angry because he was, they, were, they keep doing that. I said, oh yeah, they know BM, wow. No, they were doing that to the day and the demon didn't mind. One day they, he got angry and he shipped them. The Bible said he shipped them till they, became, they fled naked. And then he said to them, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. So, so Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. About, but who are you? So the word know there is ginosko. Do you know that when you become born again and you give your life to Christ, the, both angels and the demons in the universe know that you are a Christian. Do you know that? How many of you, you know, know that? They know. When they see you, they know. If you did it anyhow, they know. Number two, if you are not growing in God too, they know. They know they can deceive you. They know all that. Because your faith is an outlook. When they see a Christian, they see. Even the people in the world that are very bad, when you come to them and you are not bad, they know. Or you don't know. <laughs> they know. They know that you, oh, uh, you're soft. So that is why Ephesians 6 said, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
so that you can stand the tricks of the devil because they know they are coming. And so when you are going to sleep, and then I feel like I find any demon that was flying over my roof. No, no, no. They themselves, they know you are there. They, they won't come around. When they come, they know they can't touch you. Number two, you have to also understand that you have been translated from, you have been repositioned. Though you are working in this world, but you are not of this world. So anybody who is, all of us in this world, we are all in two different kingdoms. There is one group of people who are in the dark kingdom, and there's another group who are in what? The kingdom of Colossians 1. He said we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the sun. So once you are conscious of that, that I am living in the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. You are covered. Please, you are, do you understand what I'm saying? It's not your duty now. You bind that, you bind that, you bind that. No, you are covered. Say to a friend that you are covered. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man Receive not the things of the spirit. First Corinthians two fourteen, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually what discerned. First Corinthians two says, for who has known the mind of Christ? So you see that the first Corinthians two fourteen, he said, neither can he know. He's also gnosko. He can't see. He can't perceive it. So that is why when somebody is, not, is an unbeliever, don't expect that he understand why you come to church. Look, when I, I, I had a colleague who is married to a Muslim, and he, she said that it is the most difficult thing. She wouldn't even wish it for his, his worst enemy. And she, she, when she married, she became a strong Christian. Now the husband is a Muslim. Anything she would do, Christian, is foolishness unto the man. Please, I hope you are getting it. Anything is foolishness. That is why you can't grow spiritual and leave your spouse or leave your children. It is going to be difficult. If you say, let's pray, it's foolishness. Let's give tithe, it's foolishness. Let's come to church, it's foolishness. And everything is foolish because they won't know. It is, it's a state that it can't be just explained to you by science. Please, I hope you are getting it. Yeah. So, the natural man... That's an first, first Corinthians 2 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, know the mind. But we have the mind. We don't just know, we also have the mind of Christ. Second, first Corinthians 14 says, And even these things without life, giving some. Like, and even things like without life, giving some, whether pipes or harp, except they give a distinction in sound, how shall it be known? So other versions said, When a trumpet sound on certain sound, who will be ready for battle? No, so all this thing later we will speak about it. Second Peter one sixteen. But we did not we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of His Majesty. Do you see that? Now listen, see this scripture. It's one of the scriptures this week. It has really inspired me. Now I want you to, if you are sleepy, wake up for a minute and look at the scripture. He's saying that, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Look, what we have come to believe in Jesus Christ. It is not, sto- it's not a legendary story. That is what Peter is saying. Look, we, the thing that Jesus will serve, coming to church, coming to sing, to serving the Lord, it is not something we are deceiving people. That's what Paul is saying. Peter is saying. No, that is why this is scriptures that should inspire you. Look, they are real. Sometimes, of occasionally, you get confused. So, if you are going to church tomorrow, just, if I'm praying too much, no, it is not something that we have made it up. That's what he's trying to say. It's not us who came up with it, like a story, like the way they said Jesus. They said, oh, the disciples have taken Jesus and they are saying he has died and resurrected. You know, in the Bible, when he says that they paid them. No, 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 he said that. No, he said that when we made, we, when we made known, this known is the Ginosko, unto you, telling you that this thing, made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were out, eyewitnesses 
of his majesty. Some people sit on TV and say things they want. Hey, can you prove? Is there scientific proof? No, no, no. It is not a story we have made up. So as you serve the Lord, serve him well. Please, I hope you get what I'm saying. Serve him well. Don't get weary. It is not a story that has been made up. It is a true thing. They said that what we have touched, seen, and experienced, we also communicate it to you. So whatever you are doing, you are praying, you are worshiping God, you are doing all that, there is a reward attached to everything we do in church. Everything, our Christian life. There is nothing that will go unrewarded. And it is so true. Hallelujah. I mean, if you understand what I'm saying. You have to have that confidence. I want you to be on your feet.